2020. Hallelujah. So we're going to get right to it. Thank you so much for spending a part of your lunch break with me as we feast on the word. The word that we know is alive. The living word of the Most High God, Yahuwah. Hallelujah. The focus scripture, as it says, is going to be Habak 2, 3 through 4. Habak 2, 3 through 4 in Hebrew is pronounced Kabahuk. Kabahuk. Which means encouragement. And this morning on this beautiful Monday, I hope that this word will be an encouragement to you. No matter the time or day that you do listen to this, this uh, teaching, I pray that it is an encouragement to you. So we're going to read, and verse 3 says, and I'm going to be reading from the book of Yahweh scriptures, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it seems slow, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not delay. Behold the proud, his soul is not right in him, but the just will live by faith. Hmm. The King James Version is one that many of you may be more familiar with. It's talking about tarrying. The vision will tarry. But I found that the Yahweh Scriptures version, it, it broke it down even more so. It says, though it seems slow. It, it feels like the vision is slow. The title of this is Remember the Glimpse. Um, and I'm going to break down the word glimpse in a minute. But whatever it was, the, the encouragement for you today is, though it may seem slow, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not delay. Remember, the Father's timing is not our timing. We, we are governed by our emotions, what we see, what we think. Our, our vision is limited to the tip of our nose. Hallelujah. But the Father sits high. He looks low. and He knows all things from their end all the way back to their beginning. Hmm. The word glimpse the word glimpse, the noun is, which a noun is an identifying word. So glimpse means uh, a momentary or partial view. You could have like a partial view or a momentary view, or a glimpse or a brief look, a glance, a peek, you know, um, a peep. You know, you peep into something real quick. But what got me was the verb, the verb of the word glimpse. Verb means it's an action word. And the action means to see or perceive briefly or partially. Hmm. Many of you, you are to remember today the glimpse. Remember the, the thing that you were briefly or partially shown. The Father does not show us every detail. He just gives us a glimpse into what it is He is doing in our lives. Oftentimes, we try to piece it together. I know I do. We try to piece it together. We try to bookmark it and try to look for um, things that would give us a clue or a hint as to when this thing is going to come to pass. But the Father just allows us through his loving kindness, his grace, his mercy, because he understands that in our flesh we get, we get antsy, we get, we get restless. He gives us a glimpse into the promise. What was it that you need to remember today? What glimpse of your promise do you need to remember today to hold on to, to be reminded of? Because again, in the verse that we read in Habakkuk 2, 3, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. That means it is for an appointed time, the time appointed by the Father, not the time we think it should be. But at the end, and it will speak. Remember, the word of the Most High does not go out and return void. It goes out and does what it's supposed to do. So the glimpse, the vision, the thing that he has promised you, that he's allowed you to get a glimpse of, a peek, a quick look, a glance at, 
it will speak it will happen it will not lie meaning he's not going to show you something and then take it back and say oh that was just your imagination and sometimes we do imagine things and things that we see are out of our imagination but the things that the father shows us repeats it doesn't just be shown to us once he shows at least twice the same vision the same promise and the word says it will not lie meaning it won't show you something that won't come to pass and because the father doesn't live in our space and time it seems slow moving to us but he says what wait for it he says to wait for it it's like you're at a train station and you know your train's coming because you done bought the ticket by faith and you're sitting there on the platform waiting for it to arrive and it seems like it's taking a taking quite a while people are boarding their train but your train it just it's taking a while listen the conductor is on the way with the train you got to do what you got to sit there at the station and wait for it it's like when you're driving the car and you know that light's going to turn green soon, but it seems extra long today. Ah, like today, there was an emergency vehicle that drove by and I happened to catch all the green lights. Why? Because they had changed the timing of the lights so that it stayed green in the direction. Come on, somebody, that the emergency vehicle was traveling. And I so happened to be traveling in the same direction, so I caught the green lights after it. The other people at the other um, three other intersections they had to wait. Even the ones that should have been green, they had to wait. They had to wait. Their light was red and they looking at me going and they were like, well, how come she, her and her crew could go? And I got to sit at the light because the appointed time for them to go had not yet come. I was just riding on the tail of the emergency vehicle who had all green lights. Come on, somebody. But a few minutes later, look back in the rearview mirror and their light had turned green and they were able to proceed. Because inside Habakkuk 2 and 3 part B, it says, though it seems slow, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not delay. This word is for me. I'm just sharing it with you because, you know, I said I'd share some word on the lunch break. But this word was for me because as I was sitting at my desk, I said, Father, what verse am I coming out of today? What word do you have for the people? And he said, Habakkuk. And I'm like, huh? Okay, yeah, that little, little, little small book that everybody probably just whiz on by because they just flipped the pages too soon. It's only got three chapters and boom, they miss it. But the whole book of Habakkuk is encouragement. Because in the Hebrew, it means encouragement. Habakkuk, encouragement. Verse 4 of chapter 2 goes on to say again, Behold the proud... His soul is not right in him. Wait a minute. You know, the father don't like that thing called pride. And the prideful, their soul is not right in him. Because see, the prideful will be like, it ain't happened yet, so I'm going to make it happen. It ain't working out, so I'm going to do what I can to make it work out. They're not doing part B of verse 3. They're not waiting. Out of pride, they feel like, I'm going to help the father. Anybody want to raise their hand with me and say, I, I. I did some helping of the father and I just made it a hot mess. You didn't wait. You got full of pride. So you let your pride take the reins of the, of the horses and you just hitting the horses mercilessly, making them run faster and faster when they got enough sense to know the ground is not solid. It is not sure. You're going to make me, you and the wagon tip over because you in a hurry. Why don't you slow down? Uh, but, Part B of verse 4 says, but the just will live by faith. Faith walk is not a sprint race. This is not some dash, 100 meter dash, 50 meter dash, 200 meter sprint, 400 meter relay. This is a marathon. May I say this is more like a triathlon where you got to do three different types. In most triathlons, you got to swim the first leg, then you got to ride a bike the next leg, then you got to run the next leg. Man, do you know what it means to be a triathlete? Oh, that hit somebody where you needed it to hit you. This is a long distance journey and we must live it by faith. We cannot keep rushing because we're going to tire ourselves out. And every day our faith is tried, but we rest on the promises, the glimpse, and the glimpses given to us by the Father. 
those of you who tune in late, you need to go back to the beginning because I started on time and I went straight into it. There's some nuggets that you need to go back and listen to. How many of you on this Monday morning are not sitting at the train station with your ticket of faith in your hand? But you decide, I'm not going to wait on this train. I'm, I'm, I'm fitting to call an Uber. I'm going to call a taxi. I'm going to get a lift. I'm going to call my cousin, Pookie, to come get me. I'm going to call Ray Ray. Somebody got to come get me. I need a ride. You know, I need a ride. Can y'all, somebody come get me because this is taking too long. Instead of riding the train, I'm a, I'm, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get me an airline ticket. I'm taking a flight. I, I just can't take a train ride. A train going to take too long. But can I tell you something? The only time you get a good view when you're in an airplane is when you're taking off and landing. The rest of the time, you're up above the clouds. You can't see nothing. But on a train, you got a view. On a train, you get to explore places and things you never, never would have seen normally because, you know, walking around, you don't get to go where the train goes. Driving in your car, you're not really riding along the same path. But on a train, you get to see the wonders of the Father's creation. And what does that do? It helps you pass the time. It helps you to ponder and think on the Beautiful things he's already placed in your lap. The things that you already have. So while you're waiting on the promise to come, why aren't you focusing on the things around you that he has given you to enjoy at this moment? I'm talking to me right now. I don't need nobody else to be listening to this. This was just for me. Now, if this is blessing you, hallelujah. Take the train ride. This is a slow pace race. Because at the end of the train ride, it will pull into the destiny. It will pull into the destination. It'll pull into the appointed time. It'll pull into the appointed promise. It is going to arrive at the station. You ever been on a train and then never get to the station? You, you paid your ticket? You paid your ticket to go to X station. It's going to go to X station. And when it pulls up, it will. Oh, come on. When it pulls up, actually, when it's approaching its destiny or its destination, an announcement is made telling you that it is approaching. Get ready, get your belongings because the train is about to stop and we have arrived. Get your stuff and get off because you are here. Hmm. 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 So while you're on the train... And you're busy embracing and looking around at all the beautiful things that the Father has given you. Do you understand that you are now more full? You are more enriched in spirit and in heart because you took that time on that long train, that long, slow train ride to better yourself, to build up your faith. It's like a child not able to um, handle things that an adult would handle while they are yet still a child. They have to learn to grow, to mature, little by little to in increase their understanding and their knowledge. A glimpse is all he's showing you of the promise, but in the meantime, he is preparing you to arrive at the promise. Can I just say, many things he promised me, I, I wasn't ready last week. Forget a couple years ago. Let's just be current. Last week, I wasn't ready for it. If it came to me last week, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But today, I am more prepared than ever for the things that he's about to drop in my lap, for the train that is about to stop at today's station. I'm, a re I'm ready for today's Promise. Mm. I'm ready for today's promise because I stayed on the train. I took the slow ride. And while I was riding, I was letting him groom me and, and build me up and, and, and indwell in me the information I need to know to handle today's promise. This was all about encouraging you. To remind you that just as the word says, 
The vision is for an appointed time. It will speak and it will not lie. Even if it's slow, wait for it because it's going to come to pass. It will not delay. You see, appointed time and delay. It was appointed for 12 noon. You wanted it at 10, but it came at 12 noon. It didn't come at 1230. It came on time. So when you understand the beginning and the end of Habakkuk verse 2, I'm sorry, Habakkuk 2 verse 3, Look at the beginning and the end. They correlate to each other. Appointed time, and it didn't delay. It came on its appointed time. The, okay. the train is coming on its appointed time. It will arrive at the station at its appointed time. The train only goes so many miles per hour, and they've already figured out how long it's going to take the train to get to its appointed destiny. So your destiny is scheduled to arrive at X hour, and no time sooner, because it's not on your schedule. It's not your appointed time. And what do you do while you're waiting on your, your, your train to pull into the station? You look around, you embrace what it is that Father has given you, and you hold on to your faith, because it is by faith. I don't know about you. Let me break this down a little bit before I go. So I get on an airplane, and by faith, I know that that airplane is going to arrive at the airport that I bought the ticket for because I got on the right airline, right? I got on the right airplane. Or I jump in my car by faith. I know my car is going to get me to my destination. Mm. It's the same thing. I bought a ticket for a bus. And by faith, I know my bus is going to pull into the destination that it says so on the ticket. And they gave me a roundabout time of travel. Okay, it's going to take two and a half hours. So I do the little calculation on my watch and I figure, okay, fine. I'll tell the people that I'm meeting there, meet me at the train station at X hour. What glimpse do you need to remember? Because the Father has given all of us a glimpse into our future. The Father has given us a glimpse into our promise. And the glimpse to the promise was the thing that he has repeatedly shown you, not the one-off. The one-off is usually us and our wants and our desires manifesting in a dream or a vision. I'm talking about the vision that has been repeated in your dreams, the vision that other men and women of the Most High, knowing nothing, have come and verbally spoke into you or sent you a message and confirmed that thing into you. Somebody needs to rem be reminded today of the glimpse. Somebody needs to be reminded of what the Most High has shown them. Hmm. It's like the train. Unless derailed, it's going to get where it's going. Your vision. Unless you do something totally off. If you just totally... Put yourself in the way. You can't stop it from coming. Now, be careful when you let pride take over like verse 4 and you try to help the vision along. Need I tell you you're only delaying the vision from happening because the vision is for an appointed time and it's going to come the way the Father says it's going to come. Not by you touching it, not by you trying to encourage it. And here's a tip for you to remember. I shouldn't say tip, but here's a food for thought. While you are on your way to the promise, while you are on your way to the vision, just like when you have guests come into your house, you start to straighten up a little bit more. You make sure everything is in order. Could it be that your vision is getting prepared for your arrival? If you try to arrive too early, it won't be ready for you to walk into it. If you come too late, the, the beautiful hot food, let's say, that was laid out for you would have become cold because you came late, you didn't come on time. That's for you guys who, who in the natural, you got a bad habit of time. Your time management skills are horrible. You need to get better time management skills. You need to learn to be on, you need to be, Early, because if you were supposed to be someplace at 12 and you show up at 12, you are late. You should at least be there 5, 10 minutes before the time. Hmm? And that's going to help you get trained for the natural as well as the physical. Natural and physical, help me. The natural and the spiritual. 
You still scratching your head? If you don't in the natural understand the importance of time management, how are you going to tell your spirit man, be comforted? Understand that it will happen in its appointed time. But I got to be ready. I got to be ready and dressed. I got to be ready and prepared to receive it. Like I said, I couldn't receive today's promise last week because I wasn't ready because I learned some stuff over the weekend that has prepared me for today's promise to arrive. If it came last week, I would have been naked and not ready. I, my hair wouldn't have been combed. And I'm just using this as a metaphor. You understand? I wouldn't have had on the clean clothes. I wouldn't have had the right words in my mouth to speak. I'd have been a hot mess because in the natural and in the spiritual, I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. But today I'm on time. I'm actually early. I'm ready. I'm ready. So whatever the promise is that has been shown to you in a glimpse, in a vision, in a dream, Confirmed several times by other men and women of the Most High. If it hasn't come to pass, then you are now on the train. You are now on the airplane. You are now driving in the bus or the car down the street. And you need to be, what, patient. The car could only go as fast as it could go. So is the train, so is the airplane, so is the bus. And I guarantee, I would guarantee, I would, I would argue with anybody, you don't get you know, yourself in a moving vehicle to go to a destination and you didn't bring your, your luggage. Hello. You didn't pack accordingly. I wouldn't go to a ski resort with a bikini outfit and a beach towel and flip-flops. Hello. That just don't make no sense. Now, does it? Now, does it? If that makes sense to you, well, go ahead on. Go to the... Go to the Go to the ski resort in your summer beach apparel and see how that works out for you. That don't make no sense. Could it be that you don't even need to get on the train yet? You still need to learn how to pack your bags. You still need to discern in the spirit what it is you need for this vision. Come on. Ooh, that was deep. You still at a place where you home and, and you, you trying to wake up out the bed. So you could figure out what I need to pack in my bag to get ready to go on this journey to get to my promise. But for those of you in particular, I'm talking to the ones who already packed the right bag, got all they need in their possession, dressed according to the weather. I don't know, am I the only one who checks the weather every morning to see what kind of clothes to wear? You know? For those of us who are already on the journey, and it feels like it's taking forever to get to our promise, just wait. Know that it will surely come. It will not delay because it is for an appointed time. And can I tell you that if you're already on the journey, it's closer than you think? Especially if you've been on this journey for a while now, it's closer than you think. I got one more nugget and I'm going to drop and I'm going to leave you with this thought. Have you ever been somewhere, like a hotel or, or whatever, let me use a hotel, and you booked like a standard room, and due to circumstances, they ain't had no rooms and they had to give you a free upgrade. Has that ever happened to you? And you end up getting a deluxe. Better yet, you end up getting a suite. That's Double the price, but because the hotel messed up on the reservations, you got a free upgrade. Oh, man. That's why you got to be so careful how you handle folk. How you handle people in situations. So you show up at the hotel at the front desk and you say, I'm so-and-so and I came and, you know, I got a reservation. And they be like, oh, we don't have any more standard rooms available. And immediately you start running off at the lip. Instead, you just smile and be like, okay. And then wait for the person to say, but because we don't have any and it's not your fault, we will honor your reservation and give you a free upgrade. And you just smile even brighter. But if you had come with the nasty attitude, what you mean? I done spent all my, I made my reservations and I, I, 
they human too. You can't go chopping off their neck with your words. They, they human too. They just doing their job. They're going to do the best they can. That's a different story if they don't, they don't move to try and accommodate you. But any, any respectable business, regardless of what it is, will accommodate its customers. Because they understand, I just don't need no bad reviews from my customers. My customers bring in the people I want because that word of mouth is much better than any paid advertising any business could do. Hallelujah. So I would say to the ones who are on the journey right now, you're, you're in the spiritual car, train, bus, airplane, horseback, horse and buggy, walking. How about that? You walking with your, with your two, two feet, hitting the pavement, walking towards your promise. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged because you just might be walking into an upgrade. I want to scream and shout right now because, oof. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. Could it be that you're walking into an upgrade? I don't know about you, but I'm expecting me an upgrade. I'm expecting me an upgrade. I said, I'm expecting me an upgrade. How you expected you an upgrade, Zeta? And your destiny and, and everything was scheduled for an appointed time and you already had the glimpse and whatnot. Yeah, but I'm expecting me an upgrade. Because I already understood it should have gone X, Y, Z. But no, my trip has taken me from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. V, 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 W, X, Y, 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 Z. It's like, you ever heard like a record that's got a scratch and it keeps skipping? So I know I'm going to get me an upgrade. Why? Because during all the skips and during all the bumps and the bruises, I've been faithful and I've been waiting and I've been patient and I ain't been just... When I did go, ah, I'm saying, Father, ah, and he's like, yeah, but check it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see. And he'll drop it in my spirit. I was like, oh, okay, I understand. I said, I see this. He's like, yeah, you see that. Okay, upgrade. Because it's taking a little while longer to get your destination ready to receive you. Upgrade. You was ready a long time to get there, but you had, anybody ever flew an airplane and, and your, your plane was told by the tower, you know, we got a lot of um, delays right now. I need you to circle the airport and you circle in the, air, the airport for like 45 minutes. Anybody, anybody fly frequently and you understand that you, you got to circle the airport because the, the tower, the control tower was like, I need y'all to circle. We got a lot of stuff going on on the runway, a lot of planes, unexpected weather and delays. Mm. Or you ever gone on a flight and, and they bump you off and they say, if you give up your seat, we'll give you a free upgrade. Come on, somebody. Hello. We'll give you a, a hotel night stay and a free upgrade first class on the next flight out. Hey, if you just give up your seat. I done gave up my seat quite a lot. What you mean you gave up your seat? Let's talk spiritually. I done gave up my seat because the people I thought would be riding on the train with me or the destiny that I thought was my final destination if it turned out to be a, a layover. Hello, somebody. It turned out to be a layover. Because I, I was on that, that, that vehicle, that, that aircraft or that train or that bus and I had to layover. I had to layover and when I laid over, you know, somebody asked me, one of the one of the attendees was like, ma'am, do you mind giving up your seat to somebody who really needed, like somebody who was in dire need and they needed to get to their destination. And I'm like, you know what? I'm on vacation. It's cool. I'm good. They could have it. Because by faith, I know I'm going to get where I need to be. 
And if there's someone in need, come on, somebody. There might be somebody in need in your life right now. Right now, you're just thinking about you. You're just thinking about you. Truth be told, you could give them your spot. You ain't got to get there today. You could wait till tomorrow. But that person is in dire need. How about you give them your spot? How about you give them your seat? And you say, you know what, Father? I ain't going to bother you today. You go see about so-and-so. You go see about so-and-so. I'm good. I, I, I know you're going you gonna to do me right. I tell you what, you go see about so-and-so because I know you're going you gonna to compensate. Hello. You're going to compensate my delay. You're going to give me that upgrade. Because mm. the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to my father. And my father said, I will not withhold any good thing from you. So today, as I encourage myself, I'm looking for the upgrade with my eyes wide open. I'm taking in all the sights as I travel along this journey. And along the way, I, I want my countenance, my, my demeanor, my, my sense of composure to encourage somebody else who will see me. They'd be like, man, she lugging three bags, but she got a smile on her face. She lugging three bags, a car seat, a toddler, and walking a dog, and she's smiling. Or he's smiling. He holding down the family. He going to night school. He got a crazy boss. He working stupid hours. But he got a smile on his face. Head hell high. Walking with purpose. Why? Because they already know I only got to walk a few more steps and then all of these weights will be offloaded. And I'll be able to sit in a comfortable chair, put my feet up, drink me a cold beverage, eat me a good hot plate of food. I hope these analogies ring into your spirit. I hope they become something that you can visualize as your day, as your week goes on. This is only day one. This is this what? It's just Monday. That's your lunchtime break. Y'all have a great day. I mean, this encouraged me a whole man. This didn't help nobody else. It helped me. But from y'all just sticking around, I'm sure it's helping you. And from your comments, yeah, it's helping you. It's helping you. It's helping you. I'm so glad to know it's helping you. Because this morning I needed this word. I, I needed this word and I got a witness. They'll say, yep, she sure did. I needed this word. But I woke up this morning not discouraged, not really in despair. Because like I said... What I expect to happen today, I'm ready for it. Wasn't ready for it Friday. I needed the whole weekend to look out the window of the train and, and check out what's going on and be appreciative of what I have. I scroll back up to read Jennifer's post about the New King James Version. Yeah, I'm not reading out the King James Version. I'm reading out the Yahweh Scriptures. That's cool. We can embrace this encouragement. How about that? Embrace. Hold on to what you already have because every, listen, everything that you have right now in your spirit and in your physical possession, in your spiritual and physical possession, has a purpose in your promise. That's a whole lot of peas, right? Peas in the natural are good for the body. Got a lot of fiber. And what does fiber do? Clean you out. Get all that junk out of you. Get all that waste. Get it all out of you. Man, set apart is having his way today. It gets all the waste out of you. All them peas. So whatever you have in your possession is preparing you for your purpose. I'll have a great day. Remember the glimpse.